is Friday, August 19th, and this is Redeemer 411, and my last day working here at Redeemer. On this sad occasion, we'll look at Sunday's worship. Little steps, some events for you to check out, another movie night is this Saturday, and we'll have a review of last week's sermon. We return to our summer sermon series at the movies this week with the movie I Can Only Imagine. We are going back to at the movies. And um, just to hit the pause button for a second, an awesome service. Yeah. Every service is awesome because it gives glory to God. But the youth and Billy and Hallie and Sarah did a fantastic job leading worship. I heard many, many good comments. And as I think, I'm not sure if it was Rachel or Billy said it in the service on Sunday, that it is the first time that they did this. Yeah. But it's not going to be the last time because they were awesome and as you know we have awesome youth yes, here we do. and uh, Billy and Hallie will forget about it they just knock it out of the park with the youth so it's not gonna be the first time in only time they'll be back believe me but back to the movies at the movies this week I'm preaching on uh, the, I'm preaching partly on the movie I can only imagine uh, if you know the song film, you've heard it. I think the praise team, Middle Cross, has sung it in worship before. Okay. Uh, I Can Only Imagine was written by uh, Ben from Mercy Me. Uh, but it's more than a song. Um, he, he goes into in the movie about his life and why and how he wrote the song. And not to give the ending away, but it didn't take him long. I don't know if Billy knows exactly, but it took him 20 minutes, a half hour. It didn't take him long to write the song. Uh, once he got pen to paper. And, uh, but the movie's about his struggles in life and how the song came. And uh, I'm bouncing off of that and preaching on heaven and what heaven is like and, and, and uh, using Revelation and this movie. So this Sunday is on uh, Mercy Me song, I Can Only Imagine, uh, Ben's movie, and Revelation, and uh, talking about heaven. Yeah. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. And um, it, it was a, it's a chart-topping song um, that, that brings ultimate hope to any Christian uh, because it just talks about heaven, where someday, way in the future, uh, because of Jesus, we'll all end up. So I'm not quite sure of the verse in Revelation uh, because I'm, I'm, my, my brain is so dead right now. I can help you with sermons. that. It could, yeah, please, help me help out here. I got all these sermons in my head right now, but yeah. help me out, Phil. Yeah. Revelation 21, 27. Yes. It says, but nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. That's it. Thank you, Phil. Yeah. No, Appreciate thank it. you. Phil. Looking forward to that. It's going yeah, to be it's, a it's, good one. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, too. And um, the one after that is also... Uh, a very uh, powerful uh, one. It's based on the movie I Believe in Miracles mm. and talking about miracles. And so uh, next two weeks are going to yeah. be powerful messages. So, yeah. Looking forward to it. What's happening downstairs, Phil? Yeah, Little Steps. The first week of school has been interesting. Indeed. Four and fives have had assessments to help the teachers know where they need to focus their efforts. Mm -hmm. The threes have been lots of fun since there are four new children in the room. Yes. This has totally changed the dynamics of the class and caused some upheaval to the education yeah. plan. The twos are two, and that's always interesting, of course, even though they're the only room that has not added any new children, but the ones have been adding to their numbers from the nursery each month. It's always fun to see how the room changes with the addition of a new child. The nursery will be getting three new infants next month, so a lot going on, Little Steps Daycare and preschool. And you know how, how kids change through the ages, but you have little ones. Yeah. yeah. And uh, did I hear right that your little one is now walking? She is. Oh my glory. She will walk across the entire house now. Yeah. Yeah. See how kids change, and downstairs is mm -hmm. no different. These kids are downstairs changing, and Tammy does yeah. a fantastic job with all the changes, and so does the staff. Yeah. And I am confident that they'll get the ship going in the right direction, and it's gonna be awesome year, awesome year. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you want to be on the lookout, Phil, and all of you, be on the lookout for the Mission Board's Giving Tree. Now, when you come in downstairs in the fellowship room, you come in the door, you might be saying, why is there a Christmas tree sitting there for? Well, it's not a Christmas tree. Well, actually, it is. But it's an angel tree. 
And what it is, is the mission board is going to have an angel tree where they're going to start getting items for the Lincoln Elementary School. And uh, as you know, we helped uh, raise some goodies, yep. not raise, uh, bring some goodies in for the teachers. Yep. We had granola bars and candy and snacks and water and pop, and uh, Carol delivered them to the teachers, and yep. they were so, so blessed and so happy. I believe Rachel put some of the photographs on the Facebook page. So hop on the Facebook page and see that. But now it's time for the kids. So the, uh, the tree is gonna be downstairs. And uh, watch for that in the coming weeks, how we can now bless the students right. at Lincoln Elementary School. And in September, uh, as we've been saying, is the Fall Legacy of Life Banquet. Uh, if that name sounds different to you, uh, in pe years past, it was the Right to Life Banquet. Yeah. That changed the name this year. It's now the Fall Legacy of Life Banquet. And it's going to be a Monday night, September 12th. Now, if you'd like to attend, and it's free, the church is going to pay for the tables. If you'd like to attend, please let Krista Plu know that you'd like to go with us as the Redeemer Group uh, to this banquet. And uh, if we need one table, two tables, three tables, however tables we need, we'll have them there. And um, I know last week you were mentioning, uh, I asked you about the age, and you thought high school and above yeah. would be appropriate yeah i think yeah. depending on the maturity of a middle schooler possibly yeah, yeah. depending on all, everything they might know but yeah. yeah i would say probably elementary schoolers you've been not before. so much maybe middle schoolers you were there yeah, last year. yeah i've been there several times and again it's a it's an awesome event yeah. uh, i think it's a good topic of discussion to have with your elementary schoolers but being at an event like that where they're talking about some pretty intimate things it might be a little the high school and above. Too much. Well, I'd say middle school okay. and above. Okay. Yeah. I'd say, I think a middle schooler, if, you, if you've gone through confirmation, I think that you could probably go yeah. in, in here. Yeah. So. But if you have, if you have yeah. any questions, uh, Phil's been before, or if you have any questions, please see Krista. Um, uh, don't necessarily come to me, but see, see Krista, mm -hmm. and she can answer your questions. And if you're interested in going, she'll get your name and get you down for those tables. Yeah. So Thanks, that's Pastor. September 12th. Yeah, we got a lot going on in the church, yes. including the women's Bible study, going to be resuming also September 12th, and they'll begin a study of Thessalonians. Mm. They'll be collecting mites on that evening as well for that. Mm -hmm. The schools around here have all resumed their classes, yeah. and Jonah and Betty have left for yet another year of college, and Winnie and I am off to for our first year of college. And so with all of the school resuming, confirmation classes have also resumed on Wednesday nights, and Sunday school will be starting up again sometime in September. And I am excited because one of my joys is confirmation class. And that might sound weird. I don't think the kids have as much joy as I do in confirmation, but I love confirmation. Let me just give a quick announcement here, if I may. If you didn't make the parents' meeting, you can still, or your student, your child can still be part of the class. Now, one thing you may not know is that we have classes that begin in fifth grade, fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth, okay? So if your child is in fifth or sixth grade and you think that they're ready for confirmation, please talk to me. There's still time to get them in class, so please see me and let me know if you're interested. Even if you're in seventh and eighth grade or ninth grade and haven't been to one, please come see me. I'll get you signed up in the next class. So thank you, Rachel. Yep. As you know, I'm back to movie night. Yes. And uh, I'm excited because July was an awesome movie night. And this Saturday, friends, we double our pleasure. And what I mean by that is we're having two movies instead of one. Now, some things are the same, some things are different. Some things are the same. We begin at 5.30 with dinner, free dinner. Now, it's not a big, fancy Chateaubriand dinner. It's hot dogs and chips and water and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's free. And then that's at 5.30. And then at 6 o'clock, here's a change, Rachel. It's now a double feature. Now, downstairs, we'll be watching Mary Poppins. You know, the Julie Andrews, Dick Van Dyke version. Upstairs is the movie that, I'm, that I preached on, I Can Only Imagine. So, the choice is yours. Uh, for the kids, I suggest you stay downstairs. Um, I can only imagine junior high, high school and above for that one. Uh, but the kids downstairs for Mary Poppins. And if you're an adult and want to see Mary Poppins, stay downstairs. It's okay. But two movies, and they'll be going 
um, simultaneously. Yeah. That's a big word to say for me. Simultaneously, that word there I just said. Yes. Now, Mary Poppins is two hours and nine minutes. I can only imagine is an hour and 58 minutes. So about the same time. So again, 5.30 dinner, okay? Six o'clock, movie with popcorn. Downstairs, Mary Poppins. Upstairs, I can only imagine, and I am stoked. Now, somebody asked me if I'm gonna continue this come September, and their answer is no, no. But there might be something coming up in December that's gonna be fun, but uh, we'll get to that October, November-ish, but yes. So, Phil, you heard a lot of good news so far. We got the summer series back up and running. We got movie night uh, up and coming. And uh, so I got a question. Yep. How's this for leading? Any other good news? Of course there's other good news. <laughs> the good news is that because of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, we all have a pathway to join him and God in heaven for eternity. Yeah. Prior to his death and resurrection, your chances and my chances of making it to heaven were not very good. Right? But now, because of his love for us, we're guaranteed a room in his Father's house, a place at the table, acceptance into heaven when our time here is done on earth. That gift of Jesus paid by his sacrifice comes at a very low cost. It's free. Yeah. All it costs us is faith. If we believe in him and that he can save us, we'll have the opportunity to witness his grace in action. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not sure who said it at the service at the youth led, uh, but somebody, I don't know if it was Rachel, Billy, Hallie, Sarah, who said it, but they were talking about God's banquet table and how our names would be on the place card Pretty cool. on the table. And wouldn't it be mm -hmm. awesome to walk through the pearly gates and to get to the banquet table with unending feast, and as mm -hmm. Billy said, there'll be broccoli there with, <laughs> anyway. But our name is going to be on well, that or place Or not, card. if you don't want broccoli. I said that, that true, you'd say yeah. that, yeah. But our name, your name, my name, our names are going to yeah. be on that place card. I mean, how awesome is that? But you know what? Yeah. There are many people, Phil, in this world, and there might be some watching us now mm -hmm. who might be doubting that, yeah. that their name is on that place card. Um, so I'm going I'm to pray for them. But I also want to keep all the students um, in our prayers who are going back to school, pray for the teachers, pray for all the educational staff. And uh, so I want to kind of have a combined prayer for all our students, but also for those people who might be struggling, thinking, eh, am I good enough to go to heaven? Did I do enough? Yeah. And uh, so I'm going to kind of combine those two thoughts into one prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for this awesome day, another day in your creation. And Father, we I want to thank you for... for for many, many reasons, but for two reasons today. First, I want to thank you for all the teachers and the staff in our school systems, whether it be from preschool all the way up to seminaries and graduate school. Father, we pray for all these educational institutions. We pray for the, the teachers, the professors, the staff, everyone there who gives so much of the time to teach and be with these kids. And Father, we pray for all the students, whether they be two or 22, as they go back to school. Father, first keep them safe as they are in our schools. And Father, just bless them and let them be sponges that they soak in all the knowledge and the wisdom and the education that they can to make them a better person and, and, and a benefit to society and those around them. And Father, we also want to raise up to you uh, anybody who's struggling with their faith. Uh, who is struggling with what Phil just talked about, the free gift of eternal life. Father, there may be some right now who are listening to this prayer saying, did I do enough? Am I good enough to get into heaven? Father, assure them that they can do nothing except believe in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and that gets him into heaven. As we know, Jesus is the gate. He is the door. He is the only way to heaven. But Father, reassure those people who might be struggling that it's not up to them. It's because of what Jesus has done for them. So ease their anxieties and help them to center their hearts on Jesus as their Lord and Savior. In your name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Pastor.
We have these announcements for you today. The Quilter is going to be meeting at 1 p.m. on Monday. On Wednesday, the Noon Bible Study meets and Confirmation class continues at 6 p.m. And the Praise Band will be practicing at 5.30 on Thursday. Now it's time for our sermon review video. I was none too thrilled. But Rachel, why don't you tell us why you decided to leave me for a week and where you went? Uh, the LCMS Youth Gathering. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, it happens every three years. So yeah. if you're doing your math right, you should have expected it to be this summer. Mm -hmm. um, but here's a little bit about the Houston Youth Gathering, not the Minneapolis one, which I also attended. But, so it was the first night of the gathering and all through Minute Maid Park, 20,000 hot, sweaty, and tired Lutherans <laughs> somehow all found their correct assigned seats and settled in for a night of music, speakers, worship, skits, and more. And that's, I'm guessing, where all things, the LCMS Youth Gathering, uh, all begins, right? Yes, the story of all things includes, well, all things. All things things. Well, we keep hearing that, and you keep saying that, but what does all things mean? So you heard it before we left, while we were gone, and now we've come back, and you still keep hearing those three words. Well, you've come to the right place, and we're here to help you understand what exactly in all things encompasses. So Colossians 1, 15 to 20, as you heard a few minutes ago, tells the story of all things, the good, the very good, the not so good, and the reconciled. God's story of all things begins with the beginning of his perfect story. It begins with the creation of light, which was good. Okay. The creation of sky, which, which was, was good. good. The creation of land, which was good. The creation of plants, which was good. The creation of night and day, which was good. The creation of all the animals of the seas, land, and skies, which was good. And the creation of man and woman, which was very good. So when God created us, man and woman, we weren't just good, we were very good. But then the fall of man happened, which was not so good. But then the best part of the story of his good creation is the reconciliation from the coming of Christ allows for our stories to be a part of God's perfect story of all things. What's a middle word? We focus too much on the middle of our stories. We focus too much on middle words, mm -hmm. words that define our sins and how we think things should be. Mm -hmm. Words like division, anger, and hate are middle words mm -hmm. that keep us from expressing God's love and living his story. His story is a story that focuses on final words like reconciliation, joy, and love. And despite all the mess in the middle, the story of all things is ultimately a good story because it has a good ending through Jesus. His story has an ending that shows even death is a middle word and life is a final word that is available only through him. Marcus Gray was there. Now you may have heard him from, from another name, Flame, maybe. Um, so Flame or Marcus Gray is an award-winning Christian and Lutheran rap artist. And he was there and told us his story. It's an amazing story. But it is a story of loss, of losing his mother, and within a year of that, losing his father as well. Mm. His story it was of overwhelming grief and brokenness, but that was not Flame's story, it was his story, the story of Jesus and his reconciliation. Jesus takes our brokenness, he reconciles and makes all things new. Jesus gives us peace. Is there one thing that you took away from the Houston gathering uh, that you will never, ever forget? 
Yeah, um, a quote from Deaconess Naomi, and she says, you are stronger than before, more beautiful than before, more valuable than before, because Jesus has reconciled all things to himself. Okay, one last question, if I may, Brooke. If you were to tie everything you experienced in Houston, and you tied it together in one verse, what verse would you choose? Romans 5.10. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Wow, that's some powerful stuff. Thanks again for joining us. If you have any questions about Redeemer, have a topic or interview suggestion, or need to know anything about the church, you can contact the church office at churchoffice at RedeemerWorsaw.org, Pastor Carney at Pastor underscore Carney at RedeemerWorsaw.org, Phil at Phil.Prevail at gmail.com, or Billy at RLC underscore IT at RedeemerWorsaw.org. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And please join us again next week. And until then, May the Lord be with your spirit and grace be with you.